you remember what you learned in the general introduction to this course about how ancient or medieval scribes sometimes deliberately change things in the text they copied from older manuscripts? In this unit, we'll have to get a little bit technical again and have a look at how that works out in the case of the Old Muqattam narrative. We are sure you can handle these technical details because these changes in the text have astonishing implications, as you will see. First, we'll discuss the origin of this text and then we'll monitor its evolution as it reappears in later manuscripts. As you might remember from the introduction, these manuscripts are handwritten books. This was the default medium for reproducing text in the pre-modern era, before the art of printing replaced it. By meticulously comparing all versions that we can find in these manuscripts, or collating them, to use a technical term, we can obtain the data that shows us the differences or variant readings that, that distinguish one version from another. Here, at Louvain, we are in the process of gathering and analysing such data. And not just for the Mokattam story, but for a much more extensive work that contains this story, together with a lot of other information. Our project is called the International Copto Arabic Historiography Project, ICAP. As for the origin of the Muqattam narrative, or rather its first appearance in writing, this goes back to that more extensive work. This is an Arabic text, usually called the History of the Patriarchs of Alexandria, which was produced in the 11th century. To connect this to what we said on the Fatimid period in Unit 3, you should know that the text of the History of the Patriarchs of Alexandria is a very representative product of this period. Why is that? Well, we said that this period constituted a turning point in the language shift in Egypt. The Coptic language lost significant ground as a spoken language and made way for Arabic. And it so happened that this period, and more precisely the end of the 11th century, is also the very moment when the text of the History of the Patriarchs of Alexandria was put together. And its composition process definitely echoes what was going on in the linguistic landscapes. All sources written in Coptic were gathered from all over Egypt and translated into Arabic. A new text was thus created and it was given the format of a succession of biographies or lives of the patriarchs of the Coptic Church. What makes this phenomenon even more interesting is that the text was considered from the outset to be the official history of the Coptic Church. That is to say, it was the canonical or approved version of the history. Our scrupulous research has established that it was ordered and commissioned by the church authorities themselves, by the, patriarch of, by the patriarch of that time and several bishops. It thus perfectly illustrates the urgent need that these authorities felt to communicate in Arabic at that time, in the late 11th century. Moreover, the person who was put in charge of composing this Arabic text was one of those members of the Coptic elite whom we mentioned earlier on, in Unit 3. He was closely connected to, to the Fatimid rulers and at the same time actively, actively involved in the life of his church and community. His name was Mahoub ibn Mansur ibn Mufarij and he was a merchant who was also involved in tax collection. But to come back to our narrative on the Muqattam miracle, can you guess why it was included in this series of lives of patriarchs? Yes, of course. Its main protagonist was the patriarch Abraham. Therefore, it makes perfect sense that the Muqattam miracle account was incorporated in, the, in his biography or life and that this life in its turn was given its proper place within the text of the history of the patriarchs of Alexandria. So, in the late 11th century, the notable mentioned above, let's call him simply Mawhub, 
collected all those source texts. One of these was a series of biographies of patriarchs written only a few decades earlier, around 1047, and this series includes the life of Patriarch Afraham. Careful research on the manuscripts has allowed us to conclude that this source text was not written in Arabic as scholars had thought before, but in Coptic and then translated into Arabic by Mawhub some 40 years later. This conclusion was one of the results of a project carried out in the 1980s that aimed at reconstructing the composition of this complex Arabic text. These results were published in French in a collection published by our research center, the Institut Orientaliste de Louvain. Against the background of the Arabization process that we discussed earlier, it is quite remarkable that such an historical text was written in Coptic at that time. Unfortunately, this original Coptic text is lost. All we know is that it once existed and we have the name of its author, a certain Michael, Bishop of Tunis, a town in the northeast of Egypt. Thus, Mauhub's Arabic translation in the history of the Patriarchs of Alexandria is the oldest existing version of this narrative. Until recently, specialists, myself included, had the impression that these manuscripts contained roughly two versions, or recensions, to use the technical term. But in her PhD thesis, Perrine Pilet has investigated the later development of the text transmission. She has shown that things are more complex and that many of these manuscripts contain those deliberate changes in the text that we talked about earlier. Stylistic changes, clarifications, elimination of what was seen as redundant or offensive, but also additional information. So one can say that, to some extent at least, almost every manuscript of the history of the Patriarchs of Alexandria represents a version of its own. This phenomenon is what we can call a living or dynamic text tradition. Every time someone copies a text from a manuscript in this free or creative kind of way, a new version is born. Thus, by mapping such significant transformations of the content of the history of the Patriarchs of Alexandria, we can monitor the life of the narrative throughout the ages. In the next unit, we will show you a few examples of such changes from the Muqatta miracle account, which, as you know by now, has been so crucial in our own times.